So just how fast are the new M4 chips? And when are all the M4 Max coming out this year? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel. So we all wanna know how fast is this brand new M4 chip that just came out? And we have some leaks and we have some kind of benchmarks from Geekbench 6 scores. So we're gonna get into those. And I'm gonna show you the single core, the multi-core, and then can show you how fast it is compared to some of the older models. And you're gonna be pretty shocked at this, trust me, because it's really fast on the single core. It's actually pretty shocking. It's got the new process behind it. So we're gonna go through all that. And then after that, we're gonna talk about exactly when are these new Macs coming out? When in the year are they gonna come out? Is it gonna be the end of this year? Is it gonna be next month maybe? Or maybe next year? When are the M4 Max coming out? We're going to give you a good idea on this because we know a lot more about it right now. Let's get into it. All right, let's talk about Geekbench 6 single core scores for the M4 chip. Take a look at my screen. 3810 right now. This is going to be the leak score. 3810 is the single core score, which is massive. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. The multi-core over here is 14,541, another massive score as well. And we're going to show you why that is. Now, this is the base model, or just the 10 core. It's kind of the, uh, just the M4 chip, but there's going to be an M4 Pro, M4 Max, M4 Ultra. So you can imagine this is only the bottom of that barrel right there. 3,810. So if you go over here to this screen, we can see that these are the, the Mac highest ever single core benchmark. The highest right now is the M3 Max right here, Apple M3 Max, 3,131 only. That's single core. So this base model M4 beats it by like 700 points, which is crazy. So 3810 versus the fastest Mac right now in single core, 31 only, 31. So it's obviously a huge difference here. You can see it blows it away. All right, and what about Intel stuff? Now, if you look at the Intel Geekbench scores, the fastest one right now is uh, the, in the Intel Core i9, 13,900 KS. It's 3,110. So again, way, way slower than the 3,810 over here. So it blows away the Intel as well on single core, which is really crazy for a base metal chip. And then we keep going down the list here. Well, actually, let's go back to the, the multi-core. It's 14,541. Again, you got to think this is just the base metal M4, the 10-core 10, 10 10 CPU M4 chip, but it's not any of the other higher-end chips, 14,541. If we go over here, what does this mean? Obviously, there's going to be some higher ones like the M2 Ultra chip scores at 21,329 because that was really made for that kind of stuff. Multi-core stuff is it needs all those different cores for like video editing and, and really heavy tasks, and the Ultras were made for that. So it's not going to really compete with them yet. Um, although the Max chip M4 might, we, we'll see later on. Um, but down here, you can see how fast this really is. It's, it's as fast as the Apple M2 Max chip. So the, it, this one is the base model. It's as fast as the M2 Max, M-A-X. It's got the same score basically for multi-core. And it's even really close to the M3 Pro here at 15,000. You know, that's 15,200 versus 14,000. 500 so not much of a difference there and it's still you can see that it's just for the base model it's super fast chip and then what else do we have here at the end here let me keep going down the list here i just wanted to show you this last screen here because this is going to be since we talked about the ipads and having the m4 if you look at this screen this is going to be the ipad this is the uh, m4 ipad versus the m2 ipad pro which basically means you know it went from the m2 to the m4 so how much did it go up it went from on single court went from 2623 on the m2 ipad pro to 37 or 3800 basically like we just talked about on the ipad pro for the m4 massive jump there and then we see here multi-core too it went from 10,109 for the M2 up to 14,677. Again, these are a little bit different numbers than I just gave you because it's just different scores, but very close. And you can see the huge jump there just from the iPad versions as well. If you're interested in that, I just wanted to throw that in there. All right, one last thing too, it says that the Geekbench metal score on, on the new M4 chip is around 53,802, so close to 59,000 for all it's worth. So if you want to compare this to some of the older chips, that at least gives you a number. And uh, it might change, it's subject to change because obviously these are beginning stages, but still really fast. All right, let's change gears here now. So really what I want to know, and I think what a lot of people want to know is when are the new M3 or M4 Max coming out? The M4 Max coming out, not the M3s. Now, before we do that though, there's a thing you have to understand about this whole process that happened and, and what happened with the M3 chip. So Apple and TSMC, the chip maker, they were talking and, and Apple wanted to be the first to have the three nanometer chip come out. This is what we think. So they, they were like, we need this to come out and TSMC wasn't ready to, to change because this is a totally new architecture for the M4 chip. So they weren't ready for all that, the overhaul and everything, they got delayed maybe because of COVID or something. Long story short, you know, they couldn't do it. So Apple said, all right, let's, can we do the three nanometer? We will call this the M3 chip. And I think it's based off, it's called the N3B process. N3 with the B, that's kind of the, the first generation of this three nanometer process, all right? 
So they came out with that, but that was really a stopgap. It wasn't really what Apple wanted. It wasn't a new architecture. It shared the same architecture basically as the M1 and the M2. So it wasn't a lot of changes. It really wasn't you know, as much as the Apple wanted, but they still had to do it. So the new M4 chips, it's based off, even though it's three nanometer, it's based off of what they call the N3E, not the B, but the N3E, and that's the new process. And that's really what Apple envisioned from the very beginning. It was, it's, a, it's a new architecture. It's the first kind of new architecture since the M1 chip came out. So the M1 came out, then the M2, the M3. Now this is actually kind of a, a completely brand new process. You can see the scores here, they're a lot faster and stuff. So this is kind of exciting, just the way that they did everything. But obviously now we have the iPads that came out and it came out with the M4 chip, right? And you know, Apple wants to get it out, but we could have came out with the M3 chip. But they, Apple didn't want to do that because Apple wants to get rid of that whole process with TSMC with the M3s because that was, the, again, the beginning three nanometer chip process, so they don't like that. So they just jumped to the M4 on that so they don't have to really worry about the M3 chips anymore because they don't want to keep supporting those for another year and a half into the future. And that goes back to show us why we don't have any desktops now with M3 chips in them because if Apple was to come out with an M3 chip that actually was on either the Studio, the Mac Mini, or the Mac Pro, then they would have to support those for another year and a half or two years into the future and they don't want that line just to shut down and they want to move to the M4 because the M4 is really what the M3 should have been. So the good news for everybody though, the good news now is no Macs we think will come out with the M3 chip. Anything moving forward is going to be the M4 chip, including the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, the Mac, the Mac Pro. And I think we knew that, maybe not, but we know that for sure now. So first of all, let's talk about the MacBook Pros, the M4 MacBook Pros. What we think is the, you know, the M4 MacBook Pro, the M4 with the M4 Pro, the M4 Max chip, all three chips on the MacBook Pros, they're going to be coming out later in November of this year. That means that Apple basically spaced them out about a year between that and the M3s. It's a perfect timeline for it. And obviously, we'll tell you what's going to maybe come before that or after that. But we think for the MacBook Pros, we're looking at November of 2024, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be pretty accurate. All right, the next one is the MacBook Air is the brand new one. They're looking at spring of 2025 for that, we think. It's gonna space out the M3 to the M4 pretty well there because the M3s didn't come out too long ago. And it just gives, you know, it's just the way that it's gonna work. I don't think they're gonna come out at the same time in November. I think they're gonna space it out till spring of 2025 for the Airs. So if you're thinking about a MacBook Air, you know, you're gonna to have to wait a little while, so you might wanna pick up the M3. Just word of advice, but anyways, if you can wait, you may have to wait until early next year. Now the iMacs are a little kind of peculiar here because they actually got the M3 chip as well. And that came out not too long ago, it came out around the airs. So this one I think we think is gonna be around the beginning of next year too, sometime around that area. So that at that point, once that, you know, once early spring, maybe next year happens, there'll be no more Macs, and we'll talk about this in a second, but no more Macs with the you know M3 chips in them at all. So basically they'll all be replaced. And they, they can actually get rid of that process we talked about, that, that kind of three nanometer first process that they don't like anymore. They'll kind of get rid of that at that point. So we think that they're definitely going to upgrade this around the beginning of next year as well, just so they don't have any more M3s in the lineup. But that leaves us with all the other desktops, which we're going to talk about now. All right, so if we listen to Mark Gurman, he's saying that the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini, and then the Mac Studio aren't going to even ship until later this year as well. And we think it's a little bit different. I think a lot of other YouTubers do as well. So WWDC is coming next month, and we actually think, at least I think, that it's going to be shipping maybe with these M4 Macs at that point, those three desktops, and I'll tell you why. Number one, obviously they only have M2s in them right now, the M2 uh, Mac Mini, the M2 uh, Studio, and then the M2 Pro. And, you know, obviously we, we can't imagine that they're going to be shipping, you know, different computers with M4s like the MacBook Pros and stuff, and then leave M2s in the other systems. Right now it's M3 to M2. We can't imagine them skipping two generations. So we think that those computers have to come, they definitely have to come before the MacBook Pros come out with the M4 chips. That's what we're thinking. So WWDC is a perfect time for it. They can launch the, you know, the Mac Mini with the M4. They can launch the Mac Studio with the, you know, the, the M4 and even the M4 Ultra. They can do the, the MacBook, the Mac Pro also with the M4. All these big chips can come out. But at the same time, Apple likes to launch brand new chips, usually with kind of the low production lines. And those computers only get like one or 2% of all the Macs that are purchased. It's a very kind of low production. So Apple can kind of work out the bugs, you know, go through any of the processes that they need to on those systems, come out early with them and get them in the system right away here in June. And then, you know, sometime in November, you know, obviously come out with the MacBook Pros and then the MacBook Airs and then finally the iMac. But if that's not true, if it's not in WWDC, we think they might have some other event between now and November, but these have to come out, I think these three computers, these desktop computers have to come out definitely before the MacBook Pros with the M4. You guys tell me if that's kind of the right thinking or not. I think it totally is because it just wouldn't make any sense to have M4 Pros 
MacBook Pros, I mean, and then have an M2, like, you know, stu you know, studio. I mean, it just makes no sense at all to have those two generation gap there. So I think that's the, the, the best idea that we have right now. But you guys can post in the comments if you think that's right or not. I think it is actually. I think that's the perfect example of what's coming. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you can. I do videos like this, but I do product reviews. I do a whole bunch of Apple stuff. I have 650 videos or more right now on just Apple alone. So definitely subscribe if you can. I do videos, I think, about three a week too. Um, I have a podcast or kind of an Apple news on the weekends as well, either a Friday or a Saturday. So if you like that kind of stuff, subscribe. And we'll talk to everybody in the next one. <sighs> I can finally rest. Peace.